Hi guys, I wanted to put together an answer key for the extra problem set of speed and velocity problems. Uh, this way also when you're reviewing for the quiz, you can take a look at this video and remind yourself of exactly how we want to be setting up each problem. Uh, so the first question, what is the speed of a rocket that travels 8,000 meters in 15 seconds? Remember that the very first thing that we do with any of these problems are we write down DTS. Uh, those are the three variables that we could possibly be solving for. At the top of my problem set, I always remind myself what the equation is. Speed is distance divided by time. I will come through and circle all of the pieces of information that I need to know. So 8,000 meters, that's my distance. 15 seconds, that's my time. So the only one that I have left to solve for is speed. So I will circle that one before I even solve the problem. Speed equals distance over time. And that works out to 533.3 repeating. So you could either say 3 repeating or 0 0.34 something like that, that would be fine. Um, so that is exactly how that problem should look. For every single speed problem, we should have DTS, one of these three variables circled with the answer inside of it. This right here, this, counts as having shown your math. Um, you'll be able to use a calculator, and you know, with that calculator, um, you know, I don't need to see the long division or anything. So for number two, how long will your, your trip take in hours if you travel 400 kilometers at an average speed of 80 kilometers an hour. So let's first set this up. D, T, and S. Uh, 400 kilometers is my distance. I have a speed of 80 kilometers. And time is therefore what we are solving for. So I would say 80 kilometers per hour equals 400 kilometers over t. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of times when we're solving for t, which is in the bottom, it's in the denominator, uh, a lot of times when people are trying to isolate t, they will multiply by 80 or multiply by 400. That doesn't do us any good. Uh, for instance, if I show you what, we, what happens if we multiply by 400, and 400 over here, we end up with whatever... 400 times 80, like 32,000, yeah, 32,000 equals 400 squared, so 400 times 400, 160,000, yeah, 160,000 over t. So we still have t in the denominator, and all we've done is made the two <laughs> numbers bigger here, so that's no good. We don't want to do that. Um, in order to get rid of something that's in the denominator, what we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by t. So we do that, t will cancel out here, we will have 80 kilometers per hour t equals 400 kilometers. Now we can divide both sides by 80, that cancels out, kilometers cancel out, and we're dividing 400 divided by 80, which is 5. So we are left with t equals 5 hours. <coughs> um, if you want to, you are welcome to memorize um, all the three different combinations. But what I would do at the top of my quiz, if I first write s equals d over t, then I would solve for each of the things. We can multiply that both sides by t to find that d equals speed times time, right? That's the same as distance equals rate times time that you know from math. If we divide both sides here by s, we have t equals d divided by s. So I would just go up top and I would rearrange the speed equation for those three rather than trying to memorize. Um, I would end up getting confused and mess something up if I tried to memorize all three. So number three here, let's set this up first. d, t, and s. How far in meters will you travel in two minutes, traveling at a rate of six meters per second? Right away, since I'm circling these things, I notice something. Right here, we're in minutes, 
here we're in meters per second. So that's a problem. Uh, so first, distance is what we're solving for. I will circle that. Time is going to be two minutes. And our rate is six, our rate or our speed is six meters per second. So the easiest thing to do here is to switch two meters, or sorry, two minutes into seconds. So we multiply it by 60 seconds because that's the number of seconds that are in a minute. And we end up with 120 seconds. So now we can solve. We've got six meters per second equals distance over 120 seconds. Multiply both sides by 120. That will cancel out. D is equal to six meters per second times 120 seconds, which gives us a distance of 720 meters. Perfect. Uh, number four, you drive 300 miles in three hours before stopping for 30 minutes for lunch and gas after you travel 150 miles in an hour and a half. What was your average speed? Setting up the problem. Distance, 300 miles, three hours, 30 minutes, travel 150 miles, hour and a half. So 300 plus 150 will be 450 miles. 3 plus 0.5 plus 1.5, we're looking at 5 hours. We're solving for speed. So in this case, as you saw, I circled my distances because I had multiple distances and I put my time in squares. That way I could just kind of visually differentiate between what I was looking at here. So speed is 450 miles divided by five hours, which gives us a rate of 90, because nine times five is 45, 90 miles per hour. Whoops, I forgot to circle speed. 90 miles per hour. Here's our last problem. Let me move this down. The race car, we'll just set this up. The race car was moving for 4.2 hours and during that time moved 500 miles east. I'm going to underline east there. What was the speed? What is the velocity? So we all should have velocity down here. Um, so we know that we are solving for speed and velocity. Remember, the difference between speed and velocity is that speed is just how quickly you are moving. Velocity is how quickly you are moving in a direction. So since we already know the direction is east, we can just already write that down here now so that we don't forget it. Our distance was 500 miles and our time was 4.2 hours. Now we can solve for S equals D over T. We can get out the handy calculator. I'm not doing that in my head. 500 divided by 4.2 equals 119.04. So we can just say 119, right? You could always say 0 .04, you could just say 119. Um, since it's 0 .044, 4 doesn't round up, so we could just leave it as 119. We are talking miles per hour, and 119.04 miles per hour east. That would be our answer. Um, for this one, you have to have two answers because we're looking for speed and velocity. This is just double checking that you remember the difference between speed and velocity, and that is just that velocity has a direction. Um, so just a couple quick things as a reminder for these problems. Always make sure that in our answer we have units. Look at this, Mr. Kalman forgot his units meters per second. Um, so always double check, go back through your answers, make sure each of your answers has units, 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 okay, we're all set. Each problem we're gonna set, we're gonna set up with D, T, and S. Um, you can do it in any order that you want, but I think this makes the most sense because we divide distance by time to get speed. 
Um, the reason I'm having you set it up like this is because as we start to solve for acceleration or distance from acceleration or force and all these different equations that we're going to be using, it's going to get more and more complicated. Uh, so it's really helpful if we have it set up like this so every time we're remembering to put the right part of the equation and divide by the right thing and make sure everything's organized nice and neatly. Um, it'll help in the long run once we start getting to more complicated problems. Also, final reminder, this is the equation that I would memor, you know, memorize, S equals D over T. From there, at the top of my quiz, I would rearrange it, you know, multiply both sides by T to solve for distance, divide then by speed to be solving for time. So then these two here, I would figure out just by reorganizing this equation. Um, I'd write all three up at the top of my page when I'm taking my quiz and that way you would have it all set up that you could then just start plugging the numbers in when you're doing your solutions and you don't have to reorganize every single time you're looking for distance or every single time you're looking for time. Um, but if you try to remember, you know, if you try to memorize all three of these, you might just end up confusing yourself. And you know, when you're solving for time, multiplying distance and speed, or so, you know, something like that, which we don't want to do. Um, so, let me know if you've got any questions before the quiz. Thank you.